Oh. Wait, this is Defenders 58. And I want more cowbell. <laughs> It'll become obvious why I'm digging it. This is an issue of the Defenders. It is the first part of the story where Slayer Man joins the team. It is written by Anthony Davis, but also basically co-written by the rock music band Blue Oyster Card. This story is made up from a bunch of their lyrics and song titles. It reads better than it sounds. Anthony Davis, he had been writing The Defenders for about 20 issues by this point. And we begin with him bringing Doctor Strange back into the book. Doctor Strange, he was written out right at the start of his run. And now he is back. This is our bad guy. Awful design. And his name is Agent of Fortune. Because Blue Oyster Card have an album called Agents of Fortune. That is what we are dealing with here. And then our the big ones. And our Divin Fear the Reaper. And our Burning Fire. And our Godzilla. And Cities on Fire with Rock and Roll. But I am not a ginormous B.O.C. fan. So with this story, I always got a kick out of selecting random bits of dialogue or narration. And wondering if it is a reference to a song by the band. Like, the attack is already underway. That could be one of their songs for all I know. Great guitar solos in it. And here, this guy, he is beating up Doctor Strange, which isn't very nice. Is this summit that Blue Oyster Card endorse? Breaking into someone's house and beating them up? If so, I will not be listening to their music again. Nasty, nasty band. I'll listen to some Gary Glitter instead. So Agent of Fortune, I think you get another name later on, which is another song title. Summit like Harvester of Sorrows. But not Harvester of Sorrows, because I think that is a Metallica song. He defeats Doctor Strange and steals his magic amulet. And after this fight scene, we cut to the other defenders, Velcro and Ulk in his David Banner form. They have gone to pay a visit to Velcro's friend, who is at hospital. Velcro, she is enrolled at a college at this point. And this fella was a student there who got attacked by Lobo. And that is why he is in hospital now. Then Dollar Bill shows up. Dollar Bill is a fun supporting character in this run. He is another student. He is Velcro's friend. He is a filmmaker, but he's a bit of a buffoon. He's comic relief. Dollar Bill, he invites the two defenders out for dinner at a restaurant. And also, Slayer Man is there with a sexy woman who is called Vera Gemini. Because that is a song or an album by Blue Oyster Card. I have looked at Slayer Man's first appearance before. Or his first appearance in a Marvel comic anyway. More on that weird element in a few days. And I have also looked at a few Defender stories with him in. He is a good, if very D-list character. He has a nice arc in the Jim Tomatoes run. 
His backstory, which is relevant here, is that he was a member of an evil cult. And then he betrayed them when he realised they were evil. And now Vera Gemini, she is trying to get him to call off his attacks on the cult. And come and rejoin their flock. When Slayer Man learns that the evil cult have gained possession of Doctor Strange's magic necklace. He tries to attack her which reveals his costume and identity. And the two defenders mistake him for a bad guy and Vera Gemini for his target. And yeah, I have to say her full name every time. The song, or the album, is called Vera Gemini. Not just Vera. Down here, she says Reaper of Souls. That is likely a song title. And then Cloak of Shadows down here. That's probably a song too. Honey, you are the one who insisted on coming here, not me. That might be one of their hits. So Velcro, she fights Slayer Man. And Slayer Man has a fun power set in that one of his powers, or abilities rather, is that he can pull any weapon he wants out of his cape. Oh, up here we have a camera, a camera, my kingdom for a camera. That would be my guess for one of Blue Oyster Card's songs. An album track off the second or third album, maybe. And now we're here, Mamma Mia. I didn't know they did a cover of ABBA. Some of the casual references to this mythology... They are clunky as hell, and I didn't know if it makes it better or worse that said mythology is all based around a middle-of-the-road 70s rock act. Like if it was Led Zeppelin or Pink Floyd, it would be really annoying and smarmy. But that it is specifically a band like Blue Oyster Card. It is more amusing to me than it is annoying. I like Don't Fear the Reaper. I like Burning For You. But someone being so invested in them that they do a story like this. It tickles me funny bone. I would be curious to know how this story reads if you were completely oblivious to the behind the scenes stuff. If you just read this at face value and you had no idea it was all built around songs by a mediocre rock band. I'd be interested to hear what you thought of it. Unfortunately, I think it's very hard to read this without some awareness. The band even receive acknowledgement on the credits. After letting Velcro get slapped around for a bit, David Banner finally transforms into the Hulk to join the skirmish. And I did have to suspend my disbelief a bit here, a bit more than I would like to, to accept that Slayer Man somehow doesn't know who Hulk is. Velcro, him not knowing who Velcro is, I can believe. He probably would not know every superhero out there. But Hulk... He is like a major one, and he is one who gets some of the most news coverage. Like, it's always on the news that he's going on a rampage, or he's on the loose. Slayer Man, he thinks that they are both working for the evil cult, and the two defenders think he is a bad guy. Classic misunderstanding fight. 
uh, Slayer Man. He has a prehensile cloak and he uses it to teleport Hulk away. And we have got some very hefty footnote in here. Almost, in my opinion, needless. I guess it is showing some really strong and aggressive editing to point to events in three disparate books just because a police has shown up in all three of them. So with this interruption by the lawman's Slayer Man teleports himself and Velcro away with his magic cloak. And there is a psychedelic image. Lay off the LCD, everyone. And down here, a quick guest appearance from the Avengers. In Mexico, some archaeology students discover some ruins. And it is linked to this evil cult. And Spider-Man spoils a snatch. Blue Oyster card are filthy. Absolutely filthy. Bunch of perverts. And this cult, like most evil cults, they are worshipping an evil demon and trying to bring it to Earth. The evil demon is named after a blue oyster card thing. And then Doctor Strange, he learns what's going on and he has to stop things. And it is to be continued. And next issue is the name of Blue Oyster Card's debut album. There is some good stuff in here. And like I said at the beginning... It reads much better than it sounds or you would imagine. It is kind of interesting in a way. And there is some decent story in there. And even a fun Defenders tale. I'll give it 7 thumbs up because Blue Oyster Card are funny to me. It's actually really hard to loop Cowbell. So I've just sat and played that for 15 minutes. It was boring. <laughs>